Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation sea ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'll be trying out the best Halucha team that I've seen so far in Scarlet and Violet VGC. This team finished in the top 32 at the Portland Regional Championships, which took place in the beginning of May, and you might be wondering, why use Halucha? Well, the Halucha combines really nicely with Indidi, with Indidi setting up the Psychic terrain. Halucha on this team has Psychic Seed, and so it'll eat the Seed, get a Special Defense boost, and Unburden, its ability will also activate. Halucha already is a pretty fast Pokemon, so with the Unburden, it's outspeeding practically everything, and it gets access to Swords Dance as well. After a single Swords Dance boost, Halucha can really start sweeping through so many teams, and it has the ability to just get a lot of one-hit knockouts with a combination of Acrobatics and Flying Press, and so it's really good especially into a lot of the balanced teams that are running around in the format right now. The team also has some fun components like Booster Energy Sandy Shocks to boost speed, as well as a Jack Pack Palafin with Close Combat. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down below. And thank you so much as always for joining me. If you enjoy, I'd really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like on the video or subscribing to the channel as we're so close to 200,000 subscribers. Anyway, let's jump into things. First of all, a huge thank you to Peter for building and sharing this team, and congratulations to him for finishing in the top 32 at Portland Regionals. I actually commentated his game on day one, and that really inspired me, and it was so cool to see Halucha on stream at Portland. So if you want to watch that game, check out the link in the description below, as well as a rental and paste if you want to try out the team yourselves. And question of the day, with us using Halucha, I want to know what your favorite unique pick in the format is currently, down in the comment section below. Let's break down the team. The first Pokemon, of course, to talk about is Halucha, and as I mentioned in the introduction, this Pokemon can just be really strong to a lot of Pokemon in the metagame. The combination of Acrobatics and Flying Press gives you really unique coverage, and after a Swords Dance, Halucha has the ability to just get a one-hit knockout onto so many Pokemon in the format. Halucha's main downside, I would say, is that it's not very bulky, but Psychic Seed gives you that special defense boost when paired with Indy D, and Halucha can also steal Terra to cover for a lot of the weaknesses that it otherwise has. This is really important because Flutter mains in the format, obviously, and so with Steel Terra, you suddenly now can take Dazzling Gleams and Moonblast a lot better from opposing Flutter mains. So, the general idea, pair it with Indy D, go for Follow Me, set up a Swords Dance, and then just start sweeping with Halucha. Heal Pulse on Indy is really nice because it keeps Halucha around for a little bit longer as well. I've had games where maybe Halucha takes like 50% of its health on turn 1 in trade for a Swords Dance while Indy protects. Then on turn 2, I just Heal Pulse Halucha as Halucha knocks out the main thing threatening it. And so even after a single Swords Dance, this thing can just completely start sweeping through teams. And Indy is the perfect partner for it not only because of its setting up Psychic Terrain, but because it also covers for, uh, for example, Amoongus. And, uh, you know, Amoongus just is really common in the format right now. Can put Halucha to sleep, especially with a defensive Terra can normally get around acrobatics for example but with the safety goggles you really help enable the halucha to the best of its ability main thing to note here by the way is that with its speed investment you outspeed max speed base 90s even without the unburden boost one thing to keep in mind as well though is like the pokemon from the 90 to 100 speed range can be a little bit awkward if they have their own speed control like tailwind for example i also get outsped by a jump bluff in sun and jump bluff did just win portland regionals so keep that in mind as well but the idea behind this Pokemon is fairly straightforward, set up, and just start sweeping through teams. I talked a little bit about Indidi already, this is just max HP, max defense. You've got Fairy Terra here to, you know, cover for your weakness to Dark, for example. That can be really valuable. Pretty straightforward moveset, but the main thing to call out is the Heal Pulse here. And the idea, of course, is that it synergizes really nicely with Halucha, since Halucha often can take a hit or two, and Indidi can just heal it back to full. So, Indidi Halucha is one of the main go-to leads with this team. Now, what I also really like about this team is Armor Rouge is on it. It's funny because Indidi and Armor Rouge were basically everywhere at the start of Scarlet and Violet VGC, but it's completely fallen off in Regulation C, and that, of course, is because the Rune Pokemon are all part Dark Typing, so they're completely immune to Expanding Force. That being said, this is such a smart call on the team because you have two different combos, Indidi Halucha and Indidi Armor Rouge. A lot of the times when people play against this team, they over-index on the Indidi and Armor Rouge as the lead duo, because of course, otherwise Expanding Force can just really demolish a lot of teams. And as a result, people will either lead their Dark-type Pokemon like Tinglu or King Gambit, or they'll lead something that can turn into a Dark Terra, for example, to really counter this. But you know what's really good against Dark-type Pokemon? Halucha, because it's got a super effective flying press into those Dark-type Pokemon. So, what this team does really well is use this often as bait into kind of getting those big threats out of the way early. You know, those Dark-type Pokemon come out early, Halucha can de then deal with it. And then once you've cleared your opponent's Dark-type Pokemon, Armouge can just come out and completely sweep. 
So this armor is just a fairly classic offensive set. It's got life orb, armor, cannon, expanding force, wide guard, and protect. So no trick room here on this team, but the team is actually pretty fast. And wide guard is just valuable because there's so many spread moves in the format, whether it be earthquake or dazzling gleam or heat wave, for example. To round out the team, you've also got some really cool sets. The first one is a very fast eject pack palafin with close combat. The main idea here is that you can eject out before your opponent often gets a hit off into Palafin because you're running a lot more speed investment than people generally anticipate. Now, you might be wondering why in the world would you have Palafin with Indidi on the same team? And the reality is, like, often if you go with Indidi plus Palafin as a lead, you can just go, like, protect or follow me into close combat, eject out, bring in Halucha, and then you essentially just use, like, the Halucha, the Indidi, and your third Pokemon in the early game, then sweep the game in the end game with Palafin. So that's one thing that I think is really valuable for this team. Uh, and close combat just gives you new coverage that people don't generally anticipate because most people expect haze on that slot on palafin substitute and taunt have also been picking up in usage but close combat just offers you new typing coverage that your opponents generally won't anticipate and of course it is really good into dark type pokemon and there are a lot of dark types especially with all the room pokemon right now so that's one of the things that makes this palafin really unique to round things out you've got sandy shocks this Sandy Shocks is a max speed variant with the booster energy, and so with booster, you obviously are just outpacing so many things in the format other than like opposing booster paradox mons like Bundle or Flutter. And the idea is that this is really good in cleaning up games. It's got really good coverage just between Thunderbolt and Earth Power, and Grass Terra Terra Blast also gives you really good coverage into, for example, ground type Pokemon that might otherwise wall your Thunderbolts, for example. And so, yeah, I, I love Sandy Shocks as a closer for this team. And then the final mon is the Champau. I find that I bring this out the least, but it's valuable against teams that are like maybe really bulky or sorry, really frail, but have a lot of speed to work with. And so having Focus Ash and just getting an Ice Spinner off and returns really nice. The main reason I think Champau exists on this team is because of Haze. And so that's really valuable into Dondozo teams. It gives you an answer against Dondozo immediately because you will outspeed Dondozo even if you know they're fully boosted up. And so you can Haze up and then just get rid of their boosts, which is really nice. And so with this team, I often go with Halucha, uh, Indidi, that's kind of the default lead. Arm Rouge Indidi also works. Palafin Indidi also works. I've gone with Palafin plus Sandy Shocks as well as uh, the Sandy Shocks plus Chien Pao as well. So those are just a couple of modes to consider. But yeah, that's it for a breakdown. Let's quickly highlight some weaknesses. So in terms of weaknesses, I think the first thing that I'll call out is that Indidi is a great partner for Halucha, but Follow Me doesn't protect you from spread moves. So I've had a fair amount of games where essentially my opponent just like keeps targeting both Pokemon with spread moves, whether it be like, for example, Flutter Main plus Chiyu, Dazzling plus Heat Wave. And that duo in particular is pretty scary, right? Because if Halucha tries to steal Terra to get around the super effective from Dazzling, then Heat Wave becomes super effective. And I think a lot of games I've lost, actually, I end up tearing Halucha. My opponent does a good job of then using super effective hits post-Terra, so using fire or ground type attacks afterwards, so that can be really scary. So strong spread moves in general have definitely caused me issues. And I think I've also struggled against teams that have like really good speed control, whether it be like a hard Tailwind team or a hard Trick Room team, mainly because, for example, against hard Trick Room, I've often found it difficult to get an immediate knockout onto the Trick Room user, and then a lot of the Trick Room Pokemon can sweep me under Trick Room. And against Tailwind, for example, similar story where I can't really deny the Tailwind, and then you just have really fast-paced Pokemon that can just quickly knock me out before I get a chance to move. So those are two things to watch out for. I think against Indidi, Taunt in general is a really strong move. I've had games where it's like, okay, Halucha gets set up, but then Indy gets taunted and suddenly like I can't protect Halucha as easily next turn and then so Halucha just ends up getting sniped down the subsequent turn or you know the subsequent uh, turn after the next move and so that can be really scary to uh, go up against as well. And I think naturally Pokemon selection with this team is just a lot trickier than most of the teams that I feature on the channel. This team, it plays out in a pretty, you know, particular way. And I'd say, I think I lost actually the first five or six games in a row when I tried out this team because I wasn't really sure what I was doing. And I think like, it took me a good amount of time to figure out, okay, how do I exactly utilize Halucha to the best of its ability? So selecting the right four, I think can be really tricky. Like I said, some of the default modes that I go with are Halucha Indity, Arm Rouge Indity, if they don't have great Arm Rouge answers. Um, and then there's combo like I mentioned with Palafin, the Sandy Shocks, and the Champau as well, but that's just one thing to pay attention to. And I would say overall, this team is fairly frail. There aren't that many great defensive switch-ins. Indity, of course, is going to be the bulkiest option on this team, but otherwise, most of your EVs are invested in attack or special attack. So keep that in mind because you don't have the ability to switch out nearly as much as some of the bulkier teams that exist in the format. I wouldn't call it a hyper-offense team, but I also wouldn't call it a defensive team by any means, and so you'll have to keep that in mind as you use the team as well. So, yeah. Those are just a couple of things that I've noted. Let's get into these games.
Okay, we've got a very standard Palafin balance team here. Palafin, Arcanine, Amoongus, Tinglu, Gambit, and Flutter. So against these, I think like Grass Terra on this is really good. I think Halucha with Flying Press and Swords Dance in general is really good. Honestly, in this one, I think I'm down for just Halucha plus Indity. Our Sandy Shocks in the back. And then the last one, like, Arm Rouge into Double Dark doesn't feel great. Champ has a little bit more consistency and damage and also helps us boost the damage output of Halucha. Palafin does have close combat, which is actually pretty interesting into Gambit. But I don't love it here. I think I'll go with Chen Pao here. Mainly because if I were my opponent, I think Ting Lu is really good for them. And I don't want to just bring more special attackers into the battle. Chen Pao here, you know, super effective spinner into Amoongus, into Ting Lu. And if, you know, I get a little bit of chip onto the Flutter main, can also just be a knockout onto that. But to me, like, Chen Pao is probably the least important member of the team here. And I think Halucha is going to be the most important member for me. So my, my goal is to kind of just play around Halucha in this one. It's going to be double dark here, which makes sense. This would totally counter, like, any Arborish, for example. Uh, so it's pretty free to Swords Dance here on turn one. I could just Flying Press immediately, honestly, as well. Definitely don't mind Swords Dancing. Honestly, I'm thinking about Swords Dance plus Protect on turn 1 here, because NED feels like the slot that's left exposed. I'm not sure they can actually knock out Halucha with a double up. A lot of these King Gambits these days are also like Swords Dance and Double Dark type attack. Because if I get this Swords Dance off, then the next turn I can just go for like Flying Press onto either slot, and then just a Heal Pulse. And I, I think Halucha can very easily start sweeping. So... What's, I think, really strong about this team is when you look at Team Preview, your opponents will often cover for NDD Armor Rouge, and the things that cover for NDD Armor Rouge, Halucha has a really good matchup against. And I covered that a little bit in the team kind of, you know, description, but yeah, I think that's one thing I like, really like about this team. So they bring out Amoongus, which is totally fine. They're going to commit a Terra here, okay. So my question is whether or not it is, like, I mean, if it's Flying Terra, Terra Blast, that'd be a problem. But it's dark. Cool. I think most of the King Gambits these days, you should expect to see Sword Stance, Double Dark Type Attack, Protect, or Fire Terra, Terra Blast, Double Dark Type Attack, and Iron Head with Assault Vest. And these sets are often Black Glasses or Safety Goggles. But Halucha gets the plus two immediately. And the Kowtow Cleave. Perfect. Yeah, this is me taking advantage of the fact that, like, Halucha just really has a good matchup into Team Lu. So you've committed your Terra now, right? So it's really easy. I think like Flying Press into Gambit and Follow Me here is really safe because Indity has the safety goggle, so you can't spore into that slot. I honestly think Halucha just sweeps this right now, but let's see. Let's also consider what we have in the back. Chim Pao, which at this point is actually a little bit more handy because they did commit their Terra to the Gambit. Yeah, I'm not sure they needed to commit the terror there because it's like Kautau Cleave is just pretty strong as is, but maybe they're safety goggles instead of black glasses, and so they weren't confident on getting a one-hit KO onto NDD. Oh, beautiful. We just get Flying Press. That's a one-hit KO. Amoongus presumably is clicking Spore or Pollen Puff here, and with safety goggles, Spore doesn't affect us. So I honestly think Halucha can just sweep this game very quickly, and that's one of the advantages of this duo. It has a really good matchup into a lot of the balanced teams that you'll see running around. So this is exactly why Halucha has a really interesting place in the metagame right now. Alright, they bring out Arcanine, that's fine. So it's Arcanine and Moongus plus Ting Lu with no Terra potential from their end at this point. Still a couple turns of Psychic Terrain. With sa Safety Goggles, honestly I can keep just going for uh, Follow Me. What's their best play here? I don't know, Protect Amoongus. Attack Indity. I am happy to just... No need to Terra here. That makes me weak to their attacks. Uh, I'm happy to just Acrobatics into Arcanine here. And then follow me again. Okay, Amoongus switches. That's fine. 
I don't see how they break through this at this point, and this is exactly why you run safety goggles on Unity as well. So, I don't know if plus one acro KOs Arcanine, I wouldn't expect it to, but what are they going to do in return, right? Maybe Howl, maybe Flare Blitz. Wow, that almost KO'd. That's so strong. Yeah, they go for will o -Wisp. Beautiful. And the natural response my opponent had against this duel on their team was Fluttermane, but because of Steel Terra on the Halucha, we had an answer against that as well. But with Fluttermane not coming out here, we're just in such a good position. So I'm happy to just fly and press into Ting Lu and then follow me again. <laughs> yeah, I think they realize there's really not much they can do. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the power of Halucha. If your opponent does not really bring the right Pokemon or you get this free Swords Dance off without losing too many resources, Halucha can just very quickly start sweeping through teams. And so, everything about that duel really came into play. You know, the strength of Flying Press, the strength of NDD plus Halucha, NDD plus Armors and Team Preview baiting my opponent into bringing both of their Dark-type Pokemon and dropping the Palafin. All of that kind of added up to just really allow Halucha to essentially win that game in two turns. So, yeah, that's the strength of this duo. Okay, Azumarill, Dragonite, Golden Go, Arcanine, Amoongus, Hands. This feels like Halucha, Entity, Arm Rouge, plus Sandy Shocks. I think, like, mm, Palafin just doesn't feel very strong given the number of resistances. Like, Amoongus, Dragonite, and Azumarill. Close Combat doesn't really do anything for me here. Champo is interesting because Spinner's decent, but I think the four I listed are just stronger, so... I'm fine with the NDD Halucha lead. Sandy Shocks, Armor Rouge combo. So what are what, what are our goals here? I'd say basic setup, you know, sword stands up with Halucha and go from there. I think Golden Go can post, uh, pose some issues for me with Halucha, so that's one thing to be mindful of. And so given that. The goal is probably to use Halucha to clear everything else other than Golden Go. And then, like, I think both Arm Rouge and Sandy Shocks should have a very nice matchup into Golden Go in the, in the end game. Champ Hao would have been a decent bring into Golden Go specifically. And I don't know. I don't I don't think Palafin really does much for me. It is interesting. I mean, there is a world in which, like, maybe I could have, like, got into an endgame with Palafin, but I just think with so many resistances, Amoongus, Dragonite, and Azumarill, and without, like, Mystic Water, our damage output from it is just fairly lacking. Look, I think the, the main question I've asked in this game is maybe I should have let any of the armor instead, but it's going to be Dragonite Amoongus, which is fine by me. Um, yeah, I, I think this is a really good lead for me to go up against because of safety goggles on NDD. Like, it's a super safe turn one. Swords Dance into Follow Me. My only issue, I guess, is if this is Choice Band Outrage Dragonite and it one-shots NDD. Uh, I could double protect to cover for that one very specific option, but any other set and we should be fine. I'm going to Swords Dance Follow Me. I think double protecting here was also a possibility. They're going to go for a Terra. I would honestly think Terra Amoongus here so you don't get KO'd by Acrobatics. Yep. Dark Terra. Oh, that's interesting. That's their answer into NDD Armors though, right? Because then they would have been immune to Expanding Force. So that makes a lot of sense. Okay, follow me. Sword Stance. Halucha is now boosted. Alright, they just go for Spinner. That's totally fine. Yeah, that does nothing. And I don't need Terrain at this point. But you can see my opponent had a very clear response in the Arm Rouge, which is Spinner plus Dark Terra. With that, I'm happy to just click Flying Press into... Like, I'm, I'm interested in targeting Dragonite here, because I think Amoongus considers protecting or switching out. Flying Press Dragonite and then just follow me here feels pretty safe. I guess I could also contemplate, like, Detect here. Psychic into Dragonite. Or another Swords Dance. I think all of those are viable. Honestly, I'm down for the, the second Swords Dance option right now. 
I don't see how they stop this. Okay, Moonga switches. Maybe the Golden Go. Ferro Palmas. Okay, hands. It's fine. Okay, plus four attack now. Ooh! Okay, wait. Dragon Dance Dragonite makes this pretty interesting. Because my opponent can fake out right now into Dragon Dancing again. But I'm down to Detect here and then just Psychic into Dragonite to break Multi-Scale. Because then I can just Acrobatics that slot. I think it's fine. Because the other thing is, like, you already committed your Terra to Amoongus, so what is Dragonite going to do offensively? We've seen Ice Spinner. Aerial Ace is the main attack I'd be worried about. Fake out into Halucha, good. Like, even if you Dragon Dance again, it should be okay. Nice play, though. That's really cool. I like that a lot. I just don't think this Dragonite's gonna have Protect, right? So with Psychic here, I just break your Multi-Skill, and then I just Acrobatics you next turn. While going for Follow Me with NDD, and how do you respond to that? Because we're at plus four right now with this, this guy. So Acrobatics into you, Follow Me here. It does have Protect?! Protect Dragon Dance Ice Spinner? What is your last move? What? Okay, that Protect keeps them in the game. Because I honestly think if you don't Protect there, Acrobatics clears Dragonite and Halucha just sweeps the whole team. But I don't think this even KOs. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> What's the last move though? D-Dance? That's... Wow, interesting. Okay, one thing to consider is E-Speed, right? If they E-Speed, then they could Wild Charge Halucha. Ooh, I actually don't know if plus 4 Acro gets the hands here. Because if it does... Yeah, if you're my opponent, I'd say you should E-Speed here and then Wild Charge. So I think I want to commit my Terra this turn. Acrobatics and a Dragonite. Follow me. Oh. Okay, that works. Into a Moongus. Huh. I, I can't remember the last time I've seen Dragon Dance and Protect on Dragonite with Ice Spinner. Like, that move said... It, it's just because it's like Dragon Dancing to boost up Ice Spinner's damage output doesn't feel that great. So then I would think it's like Terra Blast, but I don't know, maybe it's Aerial Ice. Eh, I'm honestly just a little confused. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't extreme speed either. Either way though, I don't I don't regret the play that I made there, because I do have to cover for extreme speed plus wild charge. It is scary because theoretically my opponent could have gone E-speed close combat there. I didn't have like the best counterplay to that. So props to them for finding a way to Yeah, like kinda get back into this. Uh Dark Terror on you. I think we just double protect here. Like, this is where... You can see how good Safety Goggles Indy has been, right? It, like, single-handedly won us that first game, and now, like, just the ability to completely invalidate Amoongus is so nice. Because then this next turn, I can just acro into the hand slot. Oh, you know, the... <sighs> the interesting thing about next turn is, yeah, does Acrobatics actually KO hands? Because now, if you're my opponent, like, you can go try for the KO onto the Indy slot. I think I just target hands here. Acrobatics. But what can be awkward is if hand survives and then this spores me. What do I have in the back? Shocks plus armor rouge. Right, I'll go for... See, the other problem is like Amoongus could theoretically protect, right? Like, the play I want to make is Flying Press into Amoongus. Follow me. Okay, there's Follow Me. Okay, they just Rage Powder. That's fine. Perfect. It's the best outcome for us here, in my opinion. Nice. Flying Press gets the one-hit KO. 
What a fun move that is. Rocky Helmet, that's fine. And you can see how good like this NDD Hot Lucha combo in particular is. They just straight punch, perfect. Okay, so now it's a 3v2. Terras are committed on both ends, but I have a very boosted Halucha that they still don't really have an appropriate response to. Could be a Zoomerill, could be Golden Go in the back. Could bring out either of these. I think I like the idea of bringing Armor Rouge out first, just because the Sandy Shocks, I think having the speed advantage in the end game can be nice. And they bring out a Zoomerill, yeah, that's fine. Um, you know, I think the one thing I want to respect is this being Belly Drum, I guess. Shocks in the back hits both were super effective in this end game. A lot of Azumarill's are Assault Vests, so I'm happy to just, I think, Acrobatics into this slot, and then just Expanding Force into this slot. Nice, no Protect. And Halucha is just so strong once it gets boosted up. Gets a one-hit knockout onto Azumarill. Beautiful. And that's just game over. Like, hands can get one attack off here, but we just have so many super effective hits, and expanding force in itself does so much. Okay, Dream Punch Chaos Halucha, but that's fine. Yeah, I think what this team does such a good job of is making your opponent really play guessing games in team preview. And you can see how hard my opponents have focused to beat NDD Armor Rouge, and I've just never let it, because Halucha ends up often being such a strong option, right? And so it's like, your opponents will often commit their terror immediately, like they did in this game, for example. Maybe go with the lead to counter the Indy Arm Rouge, but then it ends up being a lot weaker into Indy plus Halucha. Kind of all of that just adds up very quickly. So just Earth Power here and Expanding Force here, and that should be it. So yeah, <laughs> I I really mean it when I think this is the strongest Halucha team that I've tried in Scarlet and Violet. I haven't really seen that many other Halucha teams to begin with, but this team just does such a good job kind of extracting as much value of this duo as possible. Um, and it's funny because I feel like Indy Armourouche has completely fallen off a cliff in terms of usage, but this team does such a good job of pressuring it with damage, but then also having Halucha as a response to all those things that do counter Indy plus Armour Rouge. Okay, we've got Garchomp, Corviknight, Chiyu, Flutter, Amoongus, and Ting Lu for this one. Pretty worried about Corviknight. Um... Like, I'm honestly thinking about bringing Champau just for Haze. Champau also has Spinner against three Ice Weeks, which is valuable. I think the main thing I'm struggling internally is do I bring Palafin or not? Or even Armor Rouge. Because, like, they have double Dark plus Corviknight. I could go with Backhaul Lucha, but... I'd say my main, the, the main lead I'm worried about here is Flutter plus Chiyu lead from their end. I think that's pretty good into Halucha plus NDD. I'm actually thinking of like leading Sandy Shocks. Like Sandy Shocks Palafin? Halucha and DD? I don't know. I don't feel as comfortable with NDD Halucha as the lead here, because I think there actually is a lot of threat in terms of damage output into Halucha. One other thing to be careful about is if I steal Terra, I'm suddenly weak to Earthquake from Tinglu and Garchomp, and that actually could be a very realistic issue. I think the idea behind Palaf and Sandy Shocks is just to exert a little bit of offensive pressure. It is Chiyu Flutter. The main thing here is it kind of feels like a guessing game. Like, is there any safe way to me for me to play this first turn out? Uh, I think double protect is probably fine to bait out to see what they want to do. Because, like, you can only Terra one of these, right? And, like, Jet Punch is pretty good into either. And if you're, like, Water Terra, then Sandy Shocks can Thunderbolt you for super effective damage. So, this was the lead I was trying to cover for. It's exactly why I didn't lead Halucha and DD immediately. But, it's still scary to go up against, nonetheless. Let's see. 
The other thing to consider is how I'm going to win the late game. What do they have in the back? Part of the thing I also have to consider is that this isn't Mystic Water Palafin, nor is it Water Terra. So, the normal amount of fun burst damage you can do doesn't exist as much here. Ghost Terra. Okay. Ghost Terra is really common. Helps you get around extreme speed from Dragonite and Fake Outs. In an ideal world, Flutter protects here, and then next turn I can double up onto it. I don't even know if Jet Punch T-Bolt KOs. Just went for Dazzling Gleam. It's not Scarf Chiyu. Dark Pulse. Hmm. I mean, I really want to go for Thunderbolt plus Jet Punch. I'm just worried that doesn't even KO Flutter Main. Let's see how bulky you are. I think the lack of Mystic Water here, though, might honestly end up really punishing me. Because I feel like I would expect this to KO with Mystic Water, but without, I'm not nearly as confident. I don't know, what was my best lead into this duo? Because I, I felt it coming, and I still don't feel like I have that favorable of a position. At least I baited out my opponent's Terra. Oh, what it could protect. I honestly tunnel vision onto thinking it was um, choice specs there because I didn't see a booster energy and booster plus specs are just both so common in this format. Um, this ends up just being a fantastic turn for my opponent. It's okay. That's a consequence I'm willing to accept in best of one. That one shot? Does that KO without choice specs or life orb? See, like, trading Flutter for Sandy Shocks would have been worthwhile there, in my opinion, but this is as bad as it gets. Yeah. I don't really see a great way to dig myself out of this. I think I there's definitely a better answer against Chiyu Flutter here. But, yeah, no, Tunnel of Visionally on the specs there was bad. I could have doubled up on a Chiyu there instead as well. I think the specs is on Chiyu, and it's probably Sash on Flutter. Okay, so I'm assuming it's specs. So you need specs, Dark Pulse, Palafin, and then just Dazzling Halucha. Right? I'm just trying to think how I can actually pull off a realistic comeback right now. Mm, not trading and just losing Sandy Shocks was a disaster for me there. Terra. Sword Stance, protect this turn. Then switch out into NDD. Oh, okay, this is a good start, I guess. Unless they just Heat Wave me here. Um, yeah, basically what I'm going for here is I Terra, I Sword Stance, turn two, I switch Palafin out into Indy Flying Press into, or sorry, Acrobatics into, um, Chiyu. And then we'll go from there. My problem is Halucha can also just set up in me, and, like, losing Sandy Shocks was my, like, Sandy Shocks is my best answer in Halucha, right? So I didn't save my resources well in this game. Yeah, they do Dark Pulse at least. Okay, good. Okay. So now I go acrobatics into you, switch into NG. But the problem is by committing Steel Terra, a body press now from Corviknight is super effective into the Halucha. Uh, Corv is such a big problem, and I, I think like the downside in leading Sandy Shocks is if I lose Shocks, I just lose my best Corv answer immediately. This is exactly what happened. My opponent did a really good job hard. I just didn't think Sandy Shocks would faint that turn. That's my other problem, right? So let's see if we can pull off a late game comeback with Halucha. 
two use gone. The other problem is that this should be Sash Flutter, right? If it's not booster or specs. And it has protect. I don't know what other item you'd be running on it, realistically. Let's bulk up. Okay. At least the upside with bulk up is I can out-trade you in terms of boosts. I can Swords Dance more than... Or quicker. Rather than, like, an Iron Defense from their end. Card Chop. So the main debate here is, does Garchomp go for a Protect this turn? I'm not confident on plus 2 acro KOing. So I think if you're my opponent, you can go Protect and Body Press on a Halucha or even go for another Bulk Up on Corviknight. Or you could just go for Earthquake. I lean towards Detect plus um, Psychic here in a Garchomp. Ideally, Garchomp tries to just Earthquake. Nope, they Protect. Okay, yeah, I, w I was really thinking about Swords Dancing there, but <laughs> it's so hard to go for. The problem now is I don't even know if Acrobatics KOs Garchomp. Okay, they Tailwind. Uh, I am gonna just acrobatics here. I kind of need it to KO. I think if not, I'm this game's actually just over. Don't follow me here. I'm also curious how fast Garchomp is here. Okay, acro does KO. Nice. So we're still in it. We are still in it. It's bulk up Tailwind Corv as well. So my other question is, do you have Roost? Iron Head does less than half. Okay. They bring out Flutter. How many turns of Psychic Terrain do we have left? Two. I don't mind double protecting here, I think. Because I want to see if I can find out Corviknight's last attack. In theory, though, they could bulk up again. Which scares me a little bit. Flutter could protect here. I don't like double protecting when I know my opponent has set up, but I do bait out the protect from Flutter, which is what I want to see. Okay. Oh, I am working so hard to try to pull off this comeback, but it is not easy. Brave Bird. You don't have recovery on... Okay, that's huge to know. Uh, This is huge because now... I can just Acrobatics into Flutter. You're probably Focus Ash, but that's fine. I'll go for Follow Me here. But the sequencing will probably be they'll Dazzling Gleam. I mean, they could Shadow Ball as well, or Moonblast. But because of um, Corviknight's moveset, they don't have Recovery. There's no Roost. It's Tailwind, Bulk Up, Brave Bird, Iron Head. And two, Halucha with the Steel Terror actually walls it because they don't have Body Press. So, even if you one-shot Indy with Flutter here, that's still okay. And they go for Gleam. That's great. We've stalled out Psychic Train perfectly. Yeah, with Sash Flutter. Del Brave Bird. Okay. Tailwind Peter's out. Terrain disappears. I think I just jet punch here. I don't think I need to get fancy right now, right? Because the thing is, you'll take so much damage from recoil. So like, flying press. Corv. 
Basically, the problem is if I click Protect at any point, it's pretty passive, and Flutter, or sorry, Corvin, I can go for another bulk up, which really concerns me. I think my main internal debate here is do I actually want to consider just Wave Crash, like doubling up on a Corviknight right now and try to KO that outright? Because you would think Flutter has to protect here. I'm actually down to double on Corv. Nice. Okay, we get the protect up. I'm not sure we KO here, but that's fine. Flying press. Yeah, we're definitely not KOing. <laughs> Okay, but that's huge. We should survive Brave Bird, right? That was dangerously close, but we got the game. So now I just acrobatics you and jet punch you. That was pretty scary, though, because obviously Flutter could have just attacked there, and that could have been really bad for me. So, yeah. Flutter faints, and Acro will KO Core. I had a huge uphill battle on this one, but even though it was like a complete disaster when Sandy Shocks fainted, we still had a path to victory, and late game Halucha is also no joke if you get a sword stance off. So, yeah. I think the main thing in this game, though, is that like I didn't feel super safe leading uh, the Halucha plus NDD, and I think that lead could have been pretty scary for me, because then it's like, I think Flutter plus Chiyu just applies so much offensive pressure, especially because it ended up being um, Ghost Terra specs Chiyu. And I think I would have been very tempted to just go Steel Terra and Fly Impress onto the Chiyu. Because um, that is a one-hit knockout onto Chiyu. But if they Ghost Terra, then I completely waste my turn. Maybe they just get the knockout onto NED and get a lot of damage onto the Halucha. And then we have to go from there. And that makes things really awkward. But yeah, that comeback definitely felt good. Okay, we've got Murkrow, Golden Go, Flutter, Tusk, Chiyu bundle here. Uh, it's really fast-paced offense. Chiyu Flutter again, too. Uh, I don't like this matchup at all, because, like, they, they're so fast-paced, and they have Tailwind from Murkrow, which I think causes issues, and they have Golden Go. <sighs> How do I break through this? Where do I think Focus Sash is the other question? Like, it could be Sash, Chiyu, Bundle, Flutter, or Tusk. If I had to guess, Booster Bundle, Specs, Flutter... Sash, Ch Sash Chiyu is the worst nightmare here, though, honestly. Uh... I don't see a super safe approach here. I think we're gonna have to take risks one way or another. Now, if you're my opponent, you would probably want to lead in a way to counter any of the armors. Chiyu plus Murkrow, for example. Oh, man. I, I really don't know. Okay, uh... I just, like... I don't know if I can really commit to Halucha in this one. I'm bringing it, but I don't know if that's correct. And the reason for that is because I think Entity is honestly just so useless for me, other than Heal Pulse. But I found, I found Team Preview here really hard. Like, I don't know what the right answer is, and I... Wouldn't be shocked if I lost this one, mainly because I think, like, my opponent just has so much offense. I don't know what the, like, best picks are here. Bondo Chiyu. That makes sense. Booster on either. Or, sorry, not on either. In, um, bundle. Okay. Yeah, so, like I said, I think it's probably Booster Bundle, Sash Chiyu, Specs Flutter. I mean, you could just freeze dry Heat Wave right now. I'm gonna double protect turn one, I think. I need to see what they're trying to go for here. I thought about close combating into either slot, but I don't know. The PAL finish just left exposed right now. They are gonna Terra. Could be Grass Terra or Ghost Terra on Bundle, Ice Terra for more freeze dry damage, or Grass Ghost here. Or water. It's gonna be grass. Now what's interesting about this is you're actually now vulnerable to Jet Punch plus Ice Spinner on that slot. So I actually don't mind seeing that Terra. That's exactly the idea behind double protecting. Went 
for Icy Wind. Ah, that makes sense. That that would have covered for me, Ice Spinning. Yeah, that's a good play. Uh... How do I get around this? Ugh. Like, speed control from this is actually really nasty as well, right? Wow. I didn't realize how good of a duel this would be. But I don't... I still don't even see a clear answer. Alright, close combat you, and then switch out into Indy D. Try to get some stuff going on. Because, like, the advantage is against... I mean, if they just Terror Blast Palafin here, though, or, like, Freeze Dry, I'm honestly just done for. But I feel like you kind of have to respect Jet Punch, Spinner, Double Up on Chiyu. That did so much damage! Okay, I was like... I know you're not Choice Specs, how did you do that much? But the answer is a crit. Oh, I didn't even think about the fact that would eject me out. That's kind of funny. Uh, I don't have a heat wave switch in. Oh, this is just this is so hard to break through, huh? I guess I'll go Halucha. Like I don't see how going to Champ how gives me any shot at winning this game with Halucha. At least if they miss, I mean heat wave won't KO me anyway. My problem is it's probably Focus Ash on Chiyu, right? I guess I've been assuming it's Sash this whole time, but maybe it's, like, Specs instead? Is that Specs damage? I honestly don't even know. Because, like, what if I go... Man, that crit on Indy actually is rough, because now another Icy Wind just KOs me as well. Man, this is, this is just so hard to break through. Like, I haven't even done damage to my opponent. But it's not like leading Indy D plus... Halucha would have solved for much either. Okay, I'm just gonna go flying press here and protect. I don't honestly see too much of an out here. Oh, that actually does get the one-hit KO. Okay, you know, if that gets the one-hit KO, then I actually think Indy D plus Halucha is a more viable lead. But then the thing is... Mm, yeah, you could just Grass Terra, Heat Wave turn one. Okay, I, I'd say at least we're in it, but I've lost so many resources to even get to this point. And my problem is, like, it's a lot harder for me to stall on my own Psychic turn. I haven't even broken the potential Focus Ash on Chiyu. Oh, but I can Ice Spinner to get rid of my own terrain. But I need to do that now. They bring out Murkrow, really? Okay. Uh... So I'm gonna Ice Spinner. Uh, I mean, you just Heat Wave Foul Play? <laughs> Wait, uh, I think the way to potentially win is if I were to KO Murkrow. Psychic, in case they miss. Ah, but they just tailwinded. Okay. I was hoping my opponent would go, like, Heat Wave Foul Play. I KO Murkrow, and they don't get Tailwind up. I think now I just lose, right? Unless they miss Heat Wave, but now you can just Dark Pulse me. If I went spinner onto Chiyu, I would have brought it down to its presumed Focus Sash. Watch it not have been Sash this whole time. Oh, Murkrow gets one shot there. Uh, if I were... Wait, okay, maybe it's still doable. Because, like... Well, we'll see what their last one is. Because Palafin can close combat Chiyu into Jet Punch. It's Golden Go. I just don't have a good Terra in this game at all. And I don't have Sucker Punch either. Key wave Shadow Ball is so safe here for my opponent. Yeah, I don't see an out anymore.
So the thing is, if I had spinnered and brought this down to Sash, if Murkrow didn't have speed investment, maybe Chen Pao can then one-shot that and Jet Punch to get the double one-hit KO. Then it's Golden Go, we double protect. Yeah, I was just, I was really worried they would just win the game that turn with the foul play. Protect. Close combat. Man, if I actually had Sucker Punch, I could have gone Dark Terra, Sucker Punch, Golden Go. Oh, they have Terra Blast. That'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, this was... I don't know. I found this so hard to break through. But if I were to replay it, I, I guess I would just go Halucha Indidi. Because Flying Press one-shots the bundle. Like, that's the main piece of information that I learned. Um... See, the problem is Sandy Shocks with the booster just gets outsped by the booster bundle on the opposing end. Staggering Murkrow Tailwind in the end game is also really smart by my opponent, I think. They play this really well. And I guess I never confirmed whether or not Chiyu had Sash there, because it low-key could have been safety goggles instead. Sometimes you'll see that. But if you if you have grass hair on it, I think goggles is a little less likely. So, yeah. I think if I were to have replayed that, yeah, I guess just go with Bundle plus, sorry, um, NDD plus Halucha. The problem is that it doesn't even feel like that good of a lead. Like, there's a lot of things that could scare me. Um, and without knowing the Terra on Shiyu, for example, if they're Ghost Terra, then suddenly Flying Press obviously becomes way less effective against them. So that's another part of the problem. Um... Yeah, Shocks doesn't do much for me there because of the Halucha, or sorry, because of the fact Bundle is booster. So you just Icy Wind me, drop my speed immediately first. Um, and with Grass Terra, I don't do much into their Chiyu. So I don't think that really helps solve anything. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think if I could have like mixed up my leads other than Halucha. Like, is there any other lead combo I could go for? But... I guess Palafin getting ejected out the way it did also was not ideal. Like, Icy Wind just helps against the Jack Pack there. Maybe I shouldn't even be bringing Palafin then. I don't know. Either way, I think, like, that game shows how you can beat this team. Like, spread damage and fast special attackers are all really scary. And my opponent just had so much to threaten Holucha right from turn one, which is why I didn't feel comfortable bringing it. But they just consistently had the speed advantage. And, you know, they were able to basically keep picking up knockouts before I could even get a chance to move, which makes things really challenging. So, yeah. All right, we've got another Palafin balanced team. I feel like this team is really designed to have a very optimal matchup into, you know, the team that we're up against. And so, that's one of the reasons, once again, why Halucha and Unity, really strong duo. So, I don't see too much reason to deviate from that. Acrobatics plus Flying Press is just amazing across the board here. I think Arm Rouge can be really good in the late game. Hmm. If I were my opponent, what would I not bring? Probably, I would drop hands. So they don't bring hands, Armor Rouge becomes a little bit less compelling to me. Uh, Expanding Force is still just so good though, no? I don't think my Palafin's that great. Like, they have Moongus, Palafin, Dragonite. Shimpa would only be for Ice Spinner, but that's not bad into half their team. I think Expanding Force is just so strong here, it's hard to give up. So, yeah, I feel like we play different variants of, you know, kind of balanced teams for all the games so far today. But once again, you know, these teams are still everywhere in the meta. I do think the meta has opened up a good amount in the last few weeks, especially after Portland Regionals. Maybe Gambit and Flutter. Okay. Mm, Energy is not really in that good shape right now. I think turn one. Well, first let's see if it's booster Flutter, and if so, what booster it is. It's not. Hmm. Turn 1 the play, I lean towards this Terra here, Swords Dance, and then Protect. And then turn 2 I can go for Flying Press onto King Gambit, Heal Pulse onto Halucha. 
Um, what else could I have led that would have been strong here? Like, Armor Rouge, definitely, I was going to say definitely not. I guess I could force a Terra out of Gambit. Gem Pao's really weak against both since we don't have Sacred Sword. I mean, we have Ice Spinner into Flutter. That's basically the extent of it. They're going to commit a Terra, okay. Fairy Terra Flutter would make me pretty happy to see. Could be Fire Terra here flying. Okay, that makes sense. My main problem is I don't know what items my opponents have, but if you're flying Terra, normally that implies Terra Blast AV. I'm just afraid Halucha doesn't get the knockout on it next turn. Moonblast, that's fine. Kaltau Cleave, okay, that's okay. That felt like Specs Moonblast, right? Like, I had a special defense boost. And Terrad. That's the case. Like, what I want to do is acrobatics to try to KO Bat and then just heal pulse to heal back Halucha. Good switch. There's not much that can come out, right? Arcanine, probably. Oh, that also makes sense. But I think we're really well positioned now for uh, Halucha plus Sandy Shocks. This is where heal pulse is such a good move. They Kowtow Cleave, that's fine. Ton of damage, but we survive. Another thing to be thinking about is the amount of turns of Psychic Terrain I have left. I think, like, Acrobatics Dragonite here and just follow me is decently safe. I think my main concern in clicking that is if Dragonite has Protect. But they're not going to in this position, so we'll get the KO under Dragonite. It's been a really fast-paced, aggressive game so far, but that's fine, I think. Because it means, that, like, now I can just bring out um, Armor Rouge and I have two turns of... Psychic Terrain to take advantage of. Normally, if it's like Flying Terra, you know, like I said, I expect that to be AV Gambit, Specs Flutter. Ooh, Iron Hand's coming out here is so good for Arm Rouge. Like, I'm really glad I decided to bring Arm Rouge in the end, right? It just, like, is a lot less situational than the other choices I had. But what's interesting is it means that... It's not like both of these Pokemon can be Assault Vested, right? So I'm definitely clicking Expanding Force right now. Halucha isn't grounded anymore because of Steel Terra, so I can just Acrobatics with that as well. Um, I have Shocks in the back. So I'm worried about, like, what? Iron Hands having Protect, Gambit Kaling, Armor Rouge? I'm going to Acrobatics in the Gambit, and then just Expanding Force here. Neither Pokemon protects. Yeah, Acro doesn't get that KO at plus two, which is why I was so wary earlier of just attacking with the Halucha. And it looks like Hands does not have the Assault Vest, so... This game highlights how strong baiting out your opponent's Terra can be, right? My opponent had one Arm Rouge answer, and they committed their Terra with King Gambit early to deal with Halucha. But in doing so, it completely opened up the door for late game Armor Rouge here. So, yeah, there's just like so many teams right now that I think can't really deal with the combination of Indity Halucha in the early game. And I think all of the games we've had so far today really demonstrate that. So, we'll just Acro Expanding Force. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any way to lose here, even if they were Focus Sash and somehow got a knockout on both, which I don't think is possible. But even then, we would have uh, Booster Energy Sandy Shocks to close up the game. So, yeah. I think what was ultimately huge here is turn one. Like, my opponent theoretically could have doubled up onto the... Yeah, actually, if they had just gone Moonblast, Kowtow Cleave onto Halucha turn one, that could have been pretty scary. It was a little bit risky for me to go for that Protect on turn one with Indity rather than follow me. But in my head, I was like, okay, if I get this off on turn one, then I should be applying so much pressure with Halucha on turn two. And I got everything that I wanted out of turn one, like saw the Moonblast commitment from Flutter, saw the Flying Terra commitment from King Gambit as well. Uh, and it opened the door for Heal Pulse, obviously, which then becomes super valuable for us. So, yeah. 
it's another game that once again demonstrates how good this duo is so i really mean it like halucha is no joke in this meta especially against the more standard balance teams that are common right now Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. So thank you so much as always for watching. I hope I've opened your eyes to the power of Halucha in this format, especially after going against so many of the more standard balance teams in the beginning of the episode. But yeah, huge thank you to Peter for the team. Thanks to you all as always for watching. Leave a like if you enjoy, and I'll see you all soon. All right, peace.